באים להתפלל איתכם. of the West Bank, Judea and Samaria. It is absolutely beautiful. Like this is like where all the biblical stories happened. You know, it's just it's just amazing walking through here. It's something else. It really is. Shabbat shalom, my friends. Welcome back to another video here. I'm with uh with my friend Moshe. What's up guys? Also known as Musa now. It's Musa. <laughs> we are in the heartland of Judea and Samaria, also known as the West Bank also known as part of the occupied Palestinian territories. We are in between, kind of in like a weird no man's land right now. Out up there is a uh, Israeli settlement called Al Bracha. Up here is the Samaritan village of Mount Grizim, which is like the biblical holy spot for the very few Samaritans that exist on planet Earth. And right over this hill is the major Palestinian city of Nablus, also known as Shechem. Uh, what we're walking through right now is like kind of a obscure limbo of a of a place where it's not really Israeli nor is it Palestinian. It, it's kind of like a free zone, and you might see that we have our kippahs on right now. And that's because we are walking to go do a Shabbat experience with the Samaritan uh, uh, community out here. There's about 850 Samaritans that live in there, and we're going to see how they practice Shabbat in their ancient uh, sort of Israelite way. They practice Shabbat using ancient Hebrew that neither Moshe or I know. Um, and we're really, really excited to see this. It's something that I think has never really been documented on YouTube before. We're going to go through the whole shebang from, uh, from the beginning right now, right before Shabbat comes in. It's about 20 to 30 minutes before Shabbat comes in and all the way to the end. And we'll document and talk to you guys about it. Moshe probably won't be in most of this video until the end. He can't be on camera during Shabbat because he practices a religion to a more serious extent than I do. But I'll be your host through this. So let's uh, let's make it up to the top of Mount Grizim over here and uh, see how the Samaritans do Shabbat. You can see what we're walking up towards right now. is people from the Samaritan community getting ready to go to Shabbat, which is very exciting. You can see signs here on the left. <laughs> Bless you, Moshe. Of uh, showing you Har Gerizim entrance, the Samaritan Museum, some ancient Hebrew. And there's plenty more where that came from. Everybody in this community is Samaritan who lives over here. Bless you again, Moshe. Thank you. About 850 strong. And a lot of them are going to congregate just here to the right. In the, one of the only synagogues here. There's only, I think, one or two. So we're going to meet them up there. And what you can see behind there are the ruins of the most abhorrent site to Samaritans in the world. It is basically their equivalent to Jerusalem. And it's right up there. A little blown out by the camera. And this is this very um, not fancy building. It's the synagogue. You can see this is the uh, Jewish or the ancient uh, Hebrew writing on top. 
on the outside. Each one of these symbols signifies a tribe of Israel from the original 12 tribes of Israel. It's all about to happen right over here. So this is a view for you guys of the entire town, pretty much of the whole downtown. Our friend Abud's grandfather, which is a current high priest, lives right here in this house. And this is the site of where they do their Passover ceremony. One of the most uh, holy and uh, important parts of the year. There's a bunch of lambs that are brought out here and slaughtered as a sacrifice and then uh, cooked here in these ovens. Um, so we're just looking, we're keeping an eye out here to see how the community gets into the zone of Shabbat. Everything becomes very quiet and then we'll hit up the synagogue when the prayers begin. So unfortunately we're leaving this Samaritan village right now because we just got word from our friend that one of the uh, high priest's brothers passed away unfortunately like 20 minutes before the entrance of Shabbat. Like, uh, so sad. And our friend was actually one of the people who had to help uh, with uh, with um, setting up the casket or the uh, coffin. So Shabbat service has basically been canceled for tonight. Uh, but later tonight at 3 a.m. we'll return back here. We'll make the trek from where we are staying, which is here in Habacha, up there on that mountain. We're gonna walk all the way through up to here in the middle of the night to come see how they do their religious prayers at three in the morning. Um, so we're gonna put a plug in it for now. We'll see you guys later in the middle of the night when me and Moshe will be very groggy and tired. Actually, as Moshe and I were coming up the village, we uh, we saw like a lot of the people in the village gathered around here actually filmed it, but I didn't know what was going on. Moshe didn't know what was going on and apparently it makes a lot of sense because somebody was literally being buried here right now in the cemetery. So it must've been just like, it just happened right now, the funeral. Interesting to see it. Also put rocks on the on the coffins, graves like us, yeah. Graves. Damn, that is a sad way to enter Shabbat, that's for sure. Well, there you go. The time is uh, three o two a.m. We are heading out again to walk thirty minutes in the darkness from this uh, Israeli Jewish settlement of Har Bracha in the West Bank across to the Samaritan village to see how they do Shabbat, so it's gonna be interesting. Let's hit it. Here's the entrance guys of Haubacha, the settlement. I'm actually kind of surprised by how lit up the road is again at three in the morning. So you can see this is again one of the outstretching villages of Nablus. Nablus actually curves around this mountain. This is like a smaller village, I forgot the name of it. You can see all the city lights over there. But I'm really really shocked at how many lights there are over here. Like this... I was expecting us to be walking this in the dark. And uh, we're not, which is awesome. We've seen about four elderly men walk into the synagogue so far. Dressed in the traditional garb. Mostly with canes. So we're really hoping that this is goes this goes on. We've been sitting on a bench for an hour waiting. So we're hoping that the ceremony is still on for tonight. So here's the door to the synagogue we're entering right now.
هي ما كلش بنا ما نستشفوش عن
So that was remarkable. That was so amazing. That was like, I don't know. I don't know if there's a way to put it into words because I mean, me and Moshe, like, again, practice modest Judaism and we do go to synagogue every once in a while and we, we like the chants, we like the music, we like the prayers. But uh, this was like, I don't know, maybe potentially it was like taking a peek into the past of what our ancestors used to do. And that was so fascinating. The way that they dress, the way that they pray, the chants. We're now getting like an inside peek. We're, we're now getting an inside look at them doing their weekly Torah practice where they read a Parsha or a portion of the Torah. So you can see the street has cleared out completely. Everybody's out. Everybody's back in their homes or practicing at friends' homes. And they're going to be reading a portion of the Torah. And then after that, we'll be going to our friend's house to partake in the early Shabbat morning traditions. It's also such a beautiful morning here. The fog is like rolling in or rolling out, I guess. The sun is just starting to rise now. Overlooking this beautiful mountain. It's amazing. Within the same house, our friend Abud invited us to have some Samaritan traditional Shabbat morning foods and delicacies. These were made up of salads and hummus, some breads, some vegetables, and of course their famous Samaritan arak which we took shots of and drink a little bit of alcohol. This is what they do at 6 in the morning. It's pretty awesome, and uh, it's fantastic celebrating Shabbat with the Samaritans. <laughs> Man, you saved my ass right now, I have to say. You saved me. I'm so dead. I, I don't even feel like I can fully <laughs> walk all the way up. I'm so dead. Ugh. <laughs> I don't even know what I like to. The camera's been on for 20 seconds. I don't even know what I want to say.
So it's what time is it? It's 8:30. Yeah. All right, guys, it's 8:30 a.m. We've been up since 2:40, 2:50 a.m. How many hours is that? Five. Barely slept last night, but man, the the religious experience with Samaritans praying in the synagogue was off the the chisel, man. It was off the his wax. That was so cool. Um, and then our friend Abud invited us in for a meal with his family. We also got to see how they um, did their Torah portions for the week and prayed. We're now making our way down Mount Gerizim, the holiest place for the Samaritan community in Israel. And we're working our way to Harbacha, the village that we're staying in. So we're going we're gonna to be chilling out for the rest of Shabbat until probably the evening time. That's the end of this video. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'm sorry my outro got deleted. Make sure you check out my good Samaritan friend. That wasn't a pun. He's actually a friend of mine, a good friend of mine, and he's Samaritan. Abud Cohen down below in the description. Thank you so much to him for helping us make this possible. And please subscribe, turn on those notifications, and join the channel if you can. It'll go a long way to supporting our channel as we struggle through this insane time. Thank you so much, and we'll see you in the next one. I love you a long time. Goodbye.